She was an amazing friend and spent many days playing bunko, volunteering at the Scarborough Lineberry House, participating in water aerobics, and attending Sunday school. Jane was a loving mother of four, grand to nine, and great-grand to 16, with a gentle heart and a listening ear backed up by a stubborn streak. She attended countless recitals, choir performances, and sporting events, and even tucked everyone under quilts made by her granny Lightfoot. Not to mention the soap operas that she watched with the girls. Her talent for writing and storytelling was also evident when either helping her children and grandchildren with poems and school papers, although math was not her thing. She told them stories about her own parents and grandparents. Also, many good times were had on Saturday mornings from her open invitation to breakfast to the kids and the grandkids. Nobody made better scrambled eggs. Jane will be missed by many. She was preceded in death by her parents, by her husband and her brother, Clinton Watson, and beloved sister-in-law, Colleen Watson. Left to cherish her memory are her children. Kay, husband Dennis Melton, Scott and wife Carla McDaniel, Tom and wife Charlotte McDaniel, Todd and wife Sandy McDaniel, her grandchildren, Jennifer, husband Darren Heal, Ben Melton, Jeff and Kate Kaylin McDaniel, Paige and Scotty Bartlett, Meredith and Scott McBee, Catherine and Michael Zimmerhansel, Laura and Jesse Gonzalez, Trent and Mackenzie McDaniel, and Mike Melton, as well as numerous nieces and nephews. And the family would like to give special thanks to Dr. Shiles Ganta for his kindness and excellent care during the last few years of Jane's life. And thinking about some scripture to read, I thought about Jane and several passages came to my mind, and so I'd like to read these Bible verses that uh, remind me of Jane. And the first that is just Jesus' words of comfort is found in John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world sees me no more, but you see me. Because I live, you shall live also. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives, give I to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And then Romans chapter 12, uh, chapter 8 says this, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or danger or sword? No, in all these things we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither the present or the future, nor any powers, any height, nor depth, or anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Then Psalm 71 says this, Since my youth, God, you have taught me, and to this day I declare your marvelous deeds. Even when I am old and gray, do not forsake me, my God, until I declare your power to the next generation your mighty acts to all who are to come. And then Revelation 14 is a great verse just about being faithful to God and the impact of that. Blessed are those who die in the Lord henceforth, that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. Let's pray together. Lord, we come today in sorrow and grief, and, but also with a smile. Because we remember a woman who lived her life faithfully. We, we saw Jane in her life. And we saw her faith. We saw her love. We experienced that. And we thank you for your promises. That we are not just left with our own emotions. But we have these great memories. This great impact of Jane's life in so many different ways. We're so grateful that Jane is with you right now. Her Lord and Savior. And that she's having a great reunion in heaven. And we thank you for that fact. It is our prayer uh, this morning that you would bless the family in a very special way. We thank you for your comforter that you give us that brings peace to us. 
And so we commit all these moments to you this morning. We thank you for your presence. We depend upon it. And all as we pray in Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you, Mickey. Thank you, Janet. I appreciate all the music we've already heard this morning. And I want us to know that there's uh, three things that we want to accomplish in this service. And that is, first of all, to give glory to God. And uh, that reminds us that this day is not the end. This is not final. There is a life after this life. And also to express to the family, to Jane's friends, our comfort and love. And then also we want to just express gratitude and celebration of Jane's life in a really great way. So what do you say about a woman like Jane? When it comes to Jane, there's stories. There's lots and lots and lots of stories. Uh, there were a lot of stories as I sat down with the family, as I looked through some of the things that the family had written and some things that I know. There were a lot of stories about this era in Jane's life when she had big hair. And Jane was five foot tall, five feet tall, uh, zero inches, all right? But when she had her beehive hair going, she was six feet tall. And everybody kind of wanted her to, you know, know have reminded her about that. Um, not even icy roads could keep Jane away from the beauty shop. And there's nothing that was going to come between her and the beauty shop at any time. There was a story about um, when the boys were in high school, Clint and one of the boys had put some chocolate milk and glasses in the door of the refrigerator. Jane had just been to the beauty shop, just got her hair done. She didn't know those glasses were there. She opened the door, kind of bent over. The glasses came out. Chocolate milk went everywhere, especially on the hair. And it was a moment of great fear. Um... They, the family talked about how Webb came in, and I think everybody was about to start making jokes, and he just went. It was a dangerous moment. He just wanted them to know how dangerous it was. Now, Kay had always uh, thought, she said, that she had the prettiest mother in the whole church. And, you know, even in recent days, she was being transported by EMTs. She said, don't take my hairnet off, no matter what. Don't take my hairnet off. She, from the hospital, uh, let's take care of my nail appointment. You know, there's all these things are going to take place. Uh, Christmas was very important to Jane. Family talked about this quite a bit. She was known for picking out great Christmas presents. Now, Jane might have been five feet tall, but Jane could hold her own. Now, with three boys after Kay, she pretty much had to be able to hold her own. Uh, they talked about how that there was never any wait till your dad gets home. Didn't need to wait for dad to get home at all. She would take care of the situation. She, she had a lot of sayings, a lot of wisdom, a lot of things that she was known for saying. One of the things she said in this kind of situation was, I love you because you're my son, but I want other people to like you. And so we're going to take care of this situation uh, she could be very much no nonsense. There was a time where Todd was not moving. There's a lot of Todd stories, you know, I gotta say. <laughs> and these stories, there's a, there's a whole lot of these. Uh, I'm gonna keep him anonymous for most of them, but this one I'm not. Uh, Todd was not moving very quickly, getting ready for church one Sunday. So Jane just loaded Todd up, and Todd went to church in his stocking feet. Just, you're going to go. She would handle it one way or the other. She had great wisdom. One of her sayings was, this too shall pass. Uh, she, we already mentioned she's great, was a great storyteller. Always stories about the family, about just life. She was also a great peacemaker. She had a great saying, don't stay mad, get over it, and move on. She was definitely great at relationships. Uh, all her in-laws felt loved. She would tell the daughter-in-laws, I love you all, but I don't want the boys back home. So she kind of wanted to make the balance that out a little bit. Uh, with friends, and I, I've heard her say this one, with friends, she'd say, I saw that friend, and they were so glad to see me. Just, and they were. They were glad to see her. And one of her phrases was, I love you, darling. Now, when I saw Jane, 
my version was she'd tell me, darling, I need my hug. So that was just going to, and it didn't ever not happen. With family, she was going to kiss, hug everybody when they left. And she was just great in that way. She also loved her church. Uh, Her faithfulness was shown in many ways in her involvement here at Crestview for 68 years. I did the math. Jane couldn't have done that math, but I did the math there. Uh, It's 68 years. She was in church every time the doors were open. She taught her Sunday school class. She took that very seriously. She loved all the preschoolers that she worked with. And the reason we know she loved them is that she told them over and over how much she loved them. Uh, It was always a blessing to see Jane at church. She found uh, practical ways to share her gifts and her talents and her time and to serve the Lord. For me, it was an honor and a blessing to be your pastor. Uh, I will miss Jane. We will miss Jane. So many were blessed because of Jane. She also loved her family. Jennifer has said that her favorite grandchild was the one that she was with. And there was that story about the grandkids that stayed over with her when they were a little smaller. And uh, parents were starting to show up, pick them up. And uh, one of the grandchildren let it slip. We had ice cream for breakfast. And I think somebody, it might have been Tom, who said, Mom, really? I mean, ice cream for breakfast? And Jane said, well, what's the problem? I mean, it's healthy. Eggs, milk, it's all healthy. It's all good for them. And then she said to the grandchildren, y'all were not supposed to tell anybody about this. That was pretty much... Jane. Um, She had a great love for her children, grandchildren. She was very proud of each one of you, her great-grandchildren. Jane's love was unconditional. That came out, I think, in so many different ways that for her family and for her friends, she would see the positive, the good in everybody. Um, She would make you feel like that you were her favorite when you were with her. Uh, She loved each one of you in her own special way. Although, Carla did say that she got a little tired of hearing how her sons were perfect. (laughs) Got got a little old after a while about how Jane would always go, yeah, my boys and my kids are just perfect. Jane loved her family. She also loved to web. Uh, Their love and their affection, uh, their honesty, grace, and commitment was seen in their 58 years of marriage until Webb's passing. And Jane also loved her Lord. Uh, The foundation of her life was her commitment to Jesus Christ and her faith. She was a real, genuine, giving Christian woman who loved her Lord. And we're going to miss someone who loved like Jane loved. I was thinking about some different passages to read today, and a couple different ones came to mind, and one of those is from uh, Proverbs 31, and it says this, a wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done. And let her works bring her praise at the city gate. One of the key verses there is verse 30 that says, But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. You didn't have to be around Jane very long before you knew about her faith. And she was going to live that out. And how being a Christian was the most important thing in her life. And her words talked about that fact. And her life lived out that reality. Another passage is Ephesians chapter 3, and it says this, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, 
so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. You know, when we commit, any person commits their life to Jesus Christ, uh, you've invited him to lead your life. And we receive power. We receive a love that is far beyond our own love. And God begins this good work in us. And the love of Christ changes everything. And it changes how we love other people. And one of the things was that Christ's love definitely, I think, shone forth in Jane's life in so many different ways, when you think about the love that she showed. What was the source of that? It was that she knew Christ's love, but then she also showed that love. And it really is a challenge for every one of us that we would love because we've been loved, because God has loved us first. And I appreciate so much for the, the fact about how Jane did that. She showed that love. I read earlier John 14, those words of Jesus about his, to his disciples, and there were some reminders there that I think are good for all of us today. Remember that God has provided Jesus. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. God has provided a place for us, and that place is in heaven. And then he has provided also a path, and that path is through Jesus Christ. I'm grateful for how Jane knew all those facts and all those realities and lived out that truth in so many different ways. And then there's this power that's mentioned. My peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives, give I to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. When anyone is in Christ, they have a new character, a new love, a new a change. They are a new person. And we are encouraged to be that kind of a person. I'm grateful for how Jane was that kind of person. She wanted to live being obedient and faithful to her Savior and to reflect him any way that she could. And one of the great ways she did that was just how she unconditionally loved. And someday we have this opportunity to see Jane again. If we too know her Savior and Lord. Finally, especially this is true for the family, but for all of you and all of her friends, we have truly received a great gift. It is the legacy, this great gift of Jane's legacy of love, of service, of encouragement. When talking with the family, uh, they mentioned, I thought, a great statement. And they said, you know, in history, there's not going to be any history books that talk about Jane McDaniel. Uh, She's not going to, you know, have any acclaim with great publicity, that sort of thing, about her achievements. But she may have had something more than that. Because it's easy to take for granted some of the things that are Jane McDaniel. Um, It's easy to take for granted parents that love Jesus who commit to spouse and to family, uh, who show what is important, who love unconditionally. Because that was true, there's a great legacy that will live on for the grandkids, the great-grandkids, and beyond. One statement that was made that I thought was a great, great statement. We hit the jackpot with mom. I think we all hit the jackpot with Jane, and we're grateful for that. We're going to sing another one of Jane's favorite songs. Will y'all stand and sing with us? When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, And the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the saved on earth shall gather over on the other shore, 
And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. want to, in just a moment, as we dismiss, invite you to make your way out to the commons to greet the family. They're going to go ahead and leave first in just a moment, and then you'll have the chance to visit with them out there. So let's pray together. Lord, we come with a sense of loss, but also a sense of celebration and a sense of just uh, how Jane impacted our lives. And Lord, we thank you for how you have given us for these years a wonderful person like Jane McDaniel. And that those that are here, especially the family and those beyond these walls, that knew Jane, were friends with Jane, that we have this great legacy of her love and her faith and just her service and her care uh, that is a great gift truly that we have received. I pray that you definitely, uh, in a very specific way, bless the family. Let them know your peace, your comfort that passes all understanding. And so, Lord, we don't grieve as those that do not have faith. But we realize that you are our hope and you are our Savior. And we thank you for Jane and the great gift that we find in Jane McDaniel. We thank you that you are the Lord of life. And we thank you that you make the difference in this life and the life that is to come. And so I pray that you would bless each one here today. And we thank you for your presence today in this place. And we thank you for Jane. And all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you?